if you're on the verge of not knowing if you want to get pregnant or not, probably don't watch this video. Probably just, just watch something else on my channel. I wish that I could say that I enjoyed being pregnant, but I did not. I hated it every day, and obviously it was very much so worth it, but we still hate it. Hey, glad you're here. Today I'm actually going to be taking you through week by week what pregnancy signs and symptoms that I had. Hopefully it'll just better prepare you if you are pregnant or trying to become pregnant. So let's get into it. So obviously when you initially get pregnant, you don't know that you're pregnant right away. So I like to call weeks one through five the weeks of blissful oblivion because you're pregnant, but yet you're not really feeling pregnant yet. And let me tell you, when that five and a half weeks hit, all of a sudden it goes severely downhill. Uh, when I found out that I was pregnant, I was about five and a half weeks and I had skipped my period, but only a couple days and I wasn't super regular. And so I honestly wasn't, that was not my first indication that I was pregnant. What my first indication was is about halfway through um, week six, I felt terrible. It felt like I had the flu. Honestly, I got pregnant right when the pandemic hit. And so I honestly was really nervous that that's what I had because it just, I felt like I was dying. And for two days straight, um, I took super long naps. I would take like one or two naps a day and I'm not a nap taker. Well, <laughs> I am now, but before baby, I was not a nap taker. And so I obviously just knew something was wrong around that time frame. And my husband and I had actually been trying to get pregnant. And so after a couple days of getting sick, I started to feel better. And I was like, you know what? It's been like three days since I was expecting my period. So I might as well go ahead and take a test. So I had to go and I went and bought tests and came back. And I was actually super nervous. This is so weird because I was we were trying to have a baby and I was still so nervous to take a pregnancy test and not because I was afraid it was going to be positive or negative, but like there was still a part of me that felt like if I got pregnant, I would have, like, I did something wrong. Like, <laughs> I think that I just spent, you know, so many years thinking that being pregnant would not be so fun and not good timing and so I hadn't really gotten out of that mental space yet. So I took a test and I was super nervous because I was like, oh my gosh, what if it's positive? And then I was like, oh my gosh, what if it's positive? <laughs> it's probably weird, but I can't be alone in thinking that. But anyway, so I took the pregnancy test. Obviously, it was positive. I was super excited, also wanted to throw up, so I walked out and I told my husband we were in quarantine, so it wasn't like I could go out and buy some cute way to tell him or even wait, so I just went out and I sat on the ground and I showed him the pregnancy test and he like looked down and then he goes, <gasps> and then looks at me and he goes, yay, and then like gives me a hug real quick, it was so cute, just the look on his face was just so cute. Um... So then like 30 seconds later, I texted my best friend and then th that was it. But that was bringing me to week six. Now, like I said before, my first indication that I was pregnant was that I felt like I had the flu. Um, I did not have a very easy pregnancy. I had basically every bad symptom that you could ever have. And so first trimester, week six through 13, I felt like I was dying. I lost 17 pounds because I could not keep food down. Um, I slept all the time. I almost, it was almost as terrible as everything was. It was a blessing that everybody was stuck at home because I am not sure how I would have functioned in the office. I would have been in the bathroom multiple times a day. Just, it would not have been good. So that was awful. Now, after week 13, when I finally got into that next stage, I finally had a break in the sickness feeling. I still had some morning sickness, um, but not bad. Weeks 13 through 20 um, were better. I started to have some energy again, and that's 
when it was kind of fun because that's when you started sh I started showing and I was able to tell people and at week 20 we found out that we were having a girl and so that was really a good time um it wasn't so terrible I still did not enjoy being pregnant even when I wasn't feeling terrible um I'm just not one of those women that enjoyed being pregnant and so this was really the only um, time period that I had some reprieve from the awfulness. However, even though I wasn't feeling sick, wow, even though I wasn't feeling sick, hot flashes did start during this time period and they were pretty terrible. It was also the middle of summer when this happened. So hot flashes mixed with the heat, uh, I literally had a fan that I literally was sit six inches in front of where I was sitting and it just blew right on me and I would be in like a tank top and shorts and my husband would be wrapped in a blanket because I was just so hot all the time. Now week 20 hit and I, that is when we found out that we were having a girl and it is also when like the ligaments in your body start loosening up because you got to get ready to have a baby and you start to get, you know, a bigger belly. And so I had terrible body aches from week 20 to 23. So really just all around body aches, but especially like in my mid back. So almost like basically the equivalent of you go to the bottom of your boobs, you go backwards. That's where my back started hurting. And it also became really hard to sleep. I did get a body pillow. I didn't get one of the big like U-shaped ones because that seemed really excessive at the time. However, I honestly would recommend that now because by the time I had my daughter, I was sleeping with five pillows and basically making that shape. So I would recommend just going ahead and getting the big pregnancy pillow instead of just getting like a one body pillow. However, I would recommend getting all the pillows because it's really the only thing that will allow you to sleep just a little bit. This was also the time period when I started getting sleep apnea and really not being able to sleep at all. So not only was sleeping uncomfortable, but I also just didn't get tired. And so that was also not fun. So weeks 23 through 30, uh, still had really bad hot flashes, really bad sleep apnea. And obviously this is where, you know, you're like going on third trimester and you're getting a bigger belly and you're honestly just kind of sore all over and the baby starts kicking which is kind of fun, mostly just painful. Um, it's cute for like the first like 10 seconds and then it just hurts basically. Um, or I guess I wouldn't say hurts at this point. It's just uncomfortable. Um, I pretty sure my baby was like confusing her days and nights because she would be still until about six o'clock in the afternoon and then, um, would kick me all night. So that was super fun. So along with the sleep apnea and the hot flashes, I started to get heartburn at this point in time and the heartburn brought back the sickness. And so I was able to eat and keep food down at this point in time, but there was basically nothing that I could eat that wouldn't give me heartburn. So this is when we started taking Tums quite often. Um, and trying not to eat spicy food and all the things that they say causes heartburn didn't help me, but maybe it'll help you. I pretty much had it no matter what I ate. Weeks 30 to 32, we started to get some actual morning sickness back with some certain foods. And so, uh, that was not fun that it came back. Uh, we also were not sleeping at all. And it was super uncomfortable to sleep. And I'm pretty sure that I kept my husband up pretty much all the time. Maybe not. He probably got great sleep, let's be honest, which is super aggravating. But I also started to lose my energy again at this point in time. Um, you just super tired all the time. Probably has to do with the fact that you, well, not you. 
I was not sleeping. I also uh, got hemorrhoids at this point in my pregnancy and they say that you can get these just because the baby is pushing on all the things and so that was kind of painful. I got the tux pads and they helped a little bit um, but they did not go away. Honestly it did not go away until I was probably 10 weeks postpartum um, but it was not painful that entire stint. It was just there that entire stint. Now weeks 33 through 36, the nausea did, um, go away again. And like I said before, the, the hemorrhoid pain did go away from this period or during this time as well. And it kept getting harder and harder to sleep and the lack of energy stuck around during this time period. Um, and also my face started to swell at this point in time. I was very thankful that it didn't swell before this, but it, I did start to notice it at this point in time. So week 37, we were almost done. I was basically hating every second of it. Um, I wish that I could say that I enjoyed being pregnant, but I did not. I hated it every day. And obviously it was very much so worth it but we still hate it. I can't say that I don't recommend because obviously my daughter is so worth it, but pregnancy is terrible. Terrible. And the women that say that they liked being pregnant either A, do not remember being pregnant, B, are psychotic, or C, are just these crazy angels of humans that I don't even know what they have in all this goodness that they have in them because, let me tell you, not fun. And at 37 weeks, my baby actually dropped. And so it was just a lot of pressure on the lower area. My hips hurt when I was awake. They hurt when I was sleeping. And also getting up and down started to get very difficult. That's when, you know, they mock the, the pregnant women where they like have to like help them get up. And that's just, it's really how you got to do it because that's about all you can do at that point in time. Week 38, uh, we had more crazy back pain, but I also lost my appetite and I had not heard of this happening before. Um, I'm not sure if maybe it was just me, uh, but even though I like even when I had the morning sickness and I couldn't keep food down, I still wanted food. Um, I didn't have a loss of appetite, but at 38 weeks I did. And so I actually had to like basically like remind myself to eat because at that point in time it just never sounded good. And obviously I knew I needed the food because I needed to feed me and my baby, but just nothing sounded good and I didn't get hungry and I'm not sure why. I also started to have Braxton Hicks contractions and at the time, obviously, you would think, and obviously you're not going to know either because the only reason I know that they were Braxton Hicks contractions at this point in time is because I've experienced the real contractions. <laughs> And so just know that Braxton Hicks contractions, um, they, they can feel like you're having actual contractions. Also, 37 weeks, your baby is going to be moving like crazy. And like I said, mine was up pretty much from 5 p.m. to like 4 a.m. That was her awake window when I was pregnant. And it was awful. I remember one night uh, we my husband and I went to bed and I was laying on my side and he like rolled over and he put his arm around me <laughs> and my daughter obviously was kicking and started kicking his arm and he rolled over. He's like, sorry, I can't cuddle with you. She's keeping me up. She's keeping you up. Just saying. There was a little small amount of resentment after that statement. We've gotten over it at this point in time, but I'm just saying, men, if you're watching this, don't say that. Now, week 39. Whew. Week 39. Back pain, no appetite, Braxton Hicks contractions, your baby's either kicking your ribs or kicking your bladder. Both are uncomfortable and 
at this point in time, you're going to the bathroom all the time. That is one thing I will say. Um, I always see women that they're like eight weeks pregnant and they say that they pee all the time. And that just didn't happen to me. Um, the peeing all the time really didn't happen to me until like 37 weeks on. Um, I'm not sure if that is literally just me or if women exaggerate because they want to go pee all the time. I don't really know. But anyways, that did not happen to me until this point. And this is when I actually had to start getting up and down um, at night all the time. It was this last week and it's just miserable. I think even the women that enjoyed being pregnant would say that week 39 is awful. Um, and I would imagine I had my daughter at 39 weeks and uh, five days. And so I week 39 was my last week. And so I cannot speak on 40 plus weeks. But to all of you who go over 39 weeks, I am so sorry for you. Because I just assume that it's that plus a little more and it's awful. So I'm so sorry that you have to go through that. Now, I have walked you through all the symptoms that I had during my pregnancy. I know that all pregnancies are going to be different. A lot of people aren't going to have pregnancies that were as bad as mine. But this was just my experience. And I feel like I only ever heard the like sugar-coated version of pregnancy symptoms and they're like oh yeah the baby was kicking but it wasn't that bad it was really cool to feel the baby and I just didn't feel that way and so I just want to let you know that if you don't feel that way it's not you're fine you're fine you don't have to love it no you're not alone in not loving it and you're allowed to just think it's awful and that doesn't mean that I don't love my baby more than anything in the world. And I don't regret having my daughter. However, pregnancy is horrible. And you're pregnant for so long. I hope that me sharing my experience helps you. Um, I don't think that it's going to make you want to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very uplifting and encouraging. However, like I said many times, it is worth it. And it's just a wonderful thing that your body can do. But it's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun at all. I hope that you enjoyed hearing about my experience. If you would like to, you could leave some of your uh, pregnancy symptoms and signs in the comments below. It would really help my channel out. And I will see you next time.